Hey, I'm Jennifer with Handmade XOXO, and you can find me at www.handmadexoxo.etsy.com or on Facebook. Um, you can find me there under Handmade XOXO. So let's get started. What I specialize in are um, embroidered items, machine embroidered items, and I own, I now own a multi needle uh, embroidery machine. I have a 10 needle Brother PR. 1000 e machine so if you don't have that but you have a multi if you have a multi needle machine hopefully these this tutorial will help you out but this is going to be about fast frames and how to use them i've been on um i'm on a lot of little private chat groups with embroidery and i've seen a lot of women like how do i use this you know how do these fast frames work what can i do and they're fantastic in the embroidery world i tell you they whoever came up with this idea was fantastic they're metal frames and there's all kinds of shapes and sizes you know, I'm not going to get in that today. If you've gotten your machine, you know the shapes and sizes that there are. So I'm not going to do that. But I just want to kind of give you a guidance on how to get to the machine and how to use them so you're not damaging your machine. I had a great tutorial from a, a lesson when I got my machine where I bought mine from was fantastic. And I know I'm sure there's people out there that buy these machines that are used and stuff and you don't get you don't get lessons you don't get help and I don't know how you do it because my lesson was much needed so that's what I'm here to do I'm just here to try to help you today um, and I'm hoping I am helpful this is my first video so please don't judge me by my first video alright so let's get started so what we have we have these fast frames and if you have a one needle this won't work for you okay so if you ever upgrade then you'll be able to use them but the first thing I want to show you, and I'm just going to show you this small one because I don't have any paper on it, so that way you don't you can see all the edges. Um, there, there's lips on these, and I wanted to show you that there's a front and a back. Okay, so on the front there's a lip that comes down, and if you'll just remember that my front lip comes down towards the front of the frame, my back side lip goes towards the top where I'm going to hook it on. Okay, so keep keep that in mind when you're putting these on you want to make sure you put them on correctly that's important you sure don't want those needles to hit your um, fast frame and I've done it one time and I do not want to do it again you know it can bend it I mean it, it can damage it so you just have to be very careful the thing about fast frames that you have to remember that was a good thing for me is that when you have your embroidery arm on you have it set to the widest it's open because you've got to put a fast frame arm on to, to hook these on to so you've got your machine set at the widest arm so your machine is thinking that you're using the biggest hoop you have you know if you have a 12 by 14 and a half hoop or a 360 by whatever hoop that's what your machine thinks you have but you may be using this tiny little 7 by 5 frame so that is why it's so important to make sure you're checking your corners, your edges. And and the way I was shown was it was so it was so easy. It really is. And I'll be honest with you, um, I felt like changing my colors was harder than trying to learn a fast frame. So anyway, and that I can do a tutorial on that one day too. But I wanted to show you an easy tip that I did. Um, not that I have a whole lot of time on my hands or anything, and I really don't. I say that I'm being serious. I'm busy. I have a, I'm a mother of two little kids, and I'm trying to run this small little business, and I actually work outside the home also. So, um, but anyway, what I did is I took time. I made little templates on pieces of paper, and I actually marked the back side of my fast frame. So here's a label. I even put the size, like this particular one here is my 7x5, so I can grab and go. I know. Hey, this is my back this is my front and then and also a neat thing that they have they have little notches here in the center you see that that's my center notch here and then they also have one at the bottom and I love that I love being center I love being straight I love being on everything I mean it's just it's I love it and that's just me I, that I like everything to be centered up and ready to go okay so from there what I'm gonna show you um, the paper it comes into it comes in a roll it comes in a big roll and I've cut this already to fit my frame um, if you need help with that I, I can try it's really hard I'm having to do this video on my laptop and it's very hard to get an angle that I need without I, don't, I just don't want to make anybody sick and, and be sitting here trying to maneuver this camera around but but hey I'll give it a shot but the paper comes on a roll right here and I bought this from Ken Sewing Center and it comes in a long tube that you can buy. So here's my frame. I've already put one on here to show you here in just a minute. 
the one that I've cut is right here. But what I normally do is I take my roll, and whatever you do, Donna, do not throw away your small pieces. I don't care if they're tiny, tiny, tiny. Keep them. Because what happens is when you don't use all your paper, you can actually recycle the part that you've cut. So get you a little envelope or something and start putting them in there. I use little gallon size baggies. And then I'll just cut pieces and start piecing them on. And, and it works. I mean, it really does. Or if you're doing hair bows, you can monogram a hair bow on a tiny little piece of that fast frame paper. So, so just keep that in mind. Keep all your scraps. You'll find if you're doing this for business, it really does pay you to do it. Um, what I do though is I actually just lay this flat on a piece of paper, and it's going to be too hard, I think, for me to show you this here. I, I can try. Let me see if I can set it up. I don't know. Um, so you see I've got my paper down here and what I normally do on the long roll is I just cut notches to the side to one side and then up at the top and then I just cut it out. I cut a square to fit this so that I'm excuse me, not wasting any more of this paper than I have to. Um, the next step that you want to do is I've got my shirt and today I'm not going to go over centering and all of that. We're just going to assume that this is this, that's something you already know how to do. I'm not going to go over that, okay? What I am going to do, though, uh, because I, I want to focus on how to do the fast frame. So, the next thing you do, but I've, I've put a fake center dot on the shirt, just so that you'll see it when, once we get to the, to the machine. Um, the next thing you do is you slide the shirt up into, you know, the fast frame. It just goes up into the shirt, like so. Um, one thing you have to remember, the bigger your design is, you know, you may have to, you may not want to get it stabilized on here too terribly tight until you have sized it up because this paper is very sticky. And once you get all your backings and stuff, like your cutaway and your note, like um, any kind of stabilizer that you're using or whatever your choice of stabilizer is, you just want, you know, you don't want that peeling off. So I, a lot of times I lightly try to put it on here. I, I center it up. I get it squared. Square it up. So now you see that my shirt, I'll back up a little, if I can back up just a little bit so you can see, my shirt is in my frame. So now we're going to move over to the machine and I'm just going to pause this for just a second. I'll be right back.